everyone, Sharon Thomas here with Established Footsteps Ministry, and I'm so glad that you are a part of our October Meditate Study, where you know we are focused on Jesus, and specifically, some statements that he made about himself. You know, Jesus made the statement, and it's going to be a, a verse that we meditate on all month long in John 8, 58, where he says, Truly, truly, before Abraham was born, I am. And that is a statement that is so rich and so, so deep in meaning. You could spend years digging out all of the truth that's there. Because what Jesus is saying here is that he is God, that he is the self-existent one. You know, God said this about himself. When Moses, many, many, many years before this, had asked the Lord, who do I tell them sent me? And God said, I am, meaning I am the self-existent one. And like I said, there's so much richness in that. We could spend so much time digging into that. Well, we're going to spend a month digging into that, looking at four of the statements that Jesus made that really just send out one beam of light after another of ways that that is true. And this first week, we have been focused on the truth that he tells us in John 6, where he says, I am the bread of life. You know, there's so much understanding that can be gleaned from that. And I think a lot of that understanding can just come from the wealth of understanding that we already have because we are so familiar with what it means to eat. We do it every day. It's universal. You have to eat to live. And so we all understand and we can all begin to think deeper into what's involved in eating and why do I eat and, and what experiences and what are the dynamics and all of those things. And we got into that this week, some in our pondering time. You know, bread is a universal uh, food across all cultures, all nations. And we could look at this and just think, okay, he's just talking bread. But what he's saying is, I am the sustenance for your life. I am the food for your life. And there's so much meaning there. And so I want to spend some time with you today talking about that meaning and, and just coming alongside you uh, with some of the things the Lord showed me. And you can, you know, set it alongside the things that the Lord's been showing you as you have been meditating. And hopefully as we spend this time together, it's just going to make all of our experiences even that much more rich. You know, like I said, bread is universal to every culture. Even if you're somebody, you know, in your personal choices that you choose to not eat bread, you probably still crave it in some way or another. I know for myself, for several years now, I have been eating a very low carb diet. And so I very, very rarely eat bread. However, I still like bread and I have found other ways with other kinds of flours and things like that to make bread like things. Like I use cauliflower to make bread things and you know, almond flour and all these different things. People crave bread. And so it is definitely universal. And so when Jesus says, I am the bread of life, he's speaking to all of us. And there's so, so much to see there. So many parallels um, as we consider the, the dynamics, the experiences, the benefits of eating bread physically, what was Jesus trying to say to us spiritually? And so I have six things today, and then some questions we're gonna just kind of talk through that I, I want us to consider and, and to ponder together. First of all, you know, eating, we eat food, we eat bread of some sort, just putting bread in the category of just food, right? We eat every single day. So the first word would be, every day. And we don't just eat once a day. Now, in other countries, sometimes that's true. Food is scarce. We have so much to be grateful for. The, the wealth of food that we have available to us, even if it's not always exactly what we want to eat, we have food available to us. And most of us eat more than once a day. In fact, we eat multiple times a day. Uh, many people in their diets today, you know, they try to eat five, six times a day. Um, they eat meals and they eat snacks and then they have additional drinks that have caloric value too. So, I mean, that we eat, we're, we're very familiar with eating. You know what? 
we also need the true bread, the spiritual sustenance that um, Jesus gives us. We need to eat every day. We need to be eating multiple times a day. If you are eating once a day, if you're getting up maybe in the morning, you're having your quiet time, that's awesome. That's a tremendous meal to have with Jesus. But I would say to you, what if you did that? What if you did that physically? You got up and you just ate once a day. Would that be enough for you? And probably the answer is no. And I would say for myself, no, not enough. I'm hungry again in a few hours, you know, five or six hours. I, I, I want to eat again. And in the same way, Jesus is telling us he is the true bread of life. And we should be eating of him every day. And I would say multiple times a day is even better. Second word would be this, crave, crave. You know, my body, my mind physically craves food. There's something that happens to me physically. God made us this way that we have a hunger signal on the inside of us that tells us when we're hungry. But that also happens in our mind and in our emotion as we get attached to food. I'm somebody, I love ice cream. And so, you know, I, I don't eat it uh, regularly, um, but as meaning every day, but I do have it once a week. And it, it's, a, it's a pleasure that I have uh, allowed myself, sometimes more than that. Uh, but, you know, that's something that I crave. I think we all know what it feels like to crave something. I would ask us if Jesus is the true bread that comes from heaven, that God has provided for us and that we need him for our spiritual sustenance, are we craving him? Are we eating out of duty or are we eating out of desire? And craving Jesus is a part of really experiencing this part of who he is. When he says, I am, there's so much there. And this specifically, he's telling us he is the true bread. I am the true bread. So are we craving the true bread? You know, when I crave ice cream, or even, you know, maybe sometimes it's pizza, if I'm, you know, gonna have a, a flex day where I'm gonna allow myself to have that, you know, the, the bread that comes with the pizza or whatever, you know, I dream about that. Like I think about it multiple times a day. If I know we're going to have something special in the evening, I look forward to that. Um, when I don't have ice cream for a while, I start to crave it and I think, oh, Sunday's coming because Sunday is the day that uh, my husband and I, we, for years, have gone on an ice cream date. And so most Sundays we do that. And so I begin to look forward to that. I begin to dream about it. I begin to plan for it. You know what? Sometimes, um, for food, we will sacrifice if we're craving so much. We'll sacrifice money, we'll sacrifice time to make it. We'll make that extra trip to the store if we don't have the ingredient that we need, all because we're craving a certain food. And so we go out of our way to make sure we satisfy that craving. You know, sometimes as well with, um, with the food, we, we eat alone or we eat with others. You know, we, we look forward to the experience of eating, right? when we're gonna to get to sit down and have that special snack or that special thing that, that our body is craving. Are we craving Jesus himself? Are we looking forward to and willing to sacrifice and planning and dreaming about the, the sustenance and the life and the way that he satisfies our souls spiritually? It's something to consider, isn't it? When he says that he's the bread of life, when we think about how we interact and experience and the dynamics of food physically and how we crave it, how does that translate into our lives spiritually? Definitely something to ponder. Something else right along with that is that we enjoy food, right? We enjoy food. You think specifically of bread. I know when I walk into Panera Bread, you know, they have all these different kinds of breads. It's either in pastries or cookies or it's in, you know, all these different kinds of artisan loaves of bread and it smells so good, right? And visually it's so appealing when it comes out and it's warm and, and all of that. I mean, it, bread is just, there's, there's an enjoyment to bread for sure. And it feels good to eat bread. And you know, if you've got some oil to dip it in or things like that, I mean, it just feels good. You know, there is an enjoyment of being with Jesus, of, of partaking of him. There is, a, there is a pleasure in that. As we consider that uh, dynamic and that experience and that benefit of enjoying physical bread, ponder that alongside your experience of how you are partaking of Jesus. 
is there is there an enjoyment there for you in your experiences with him also the word satisfaction you know enjoyment's one thing satisfaction that sense of fullness of being satisfied you know mentally uh, that happens for us with food it happens physically when our you know our belly feels full uh, but in the same way with with Jesus there's a sense of we come hungry right we come every day and we're craving and we enjoy that but there is a sense of satisfaction of having partaken of Christ of, of having received mentally maybe for our minds or in our heart or emotional that just that sense of fullness after we have been partaking of Jesus another word would be this one energy you know when we eat bread bread is a carb bread uh, you know provides energy for our physical bodies that is a benefit of it that's a dynamic and experience when you eat bread you are going to get that immediate energy in the same way when we spend time with Jesus when we partake of him when he is that source of life for us spiritually there is a sense of energy about us there's not this oh I'm so tired this weariness this fainting that's how we feel when we're physically hungry right we, we can get hangry right well there's no reason to be hangry spiritually when we are partaking of Jesus there's no reason to be faint and lacking energy because bread Jesus the true bread gives us energy and then the third or the last word uh, the sixth one would be digestion now you might think what do you what do you mean well I think this is really important you know the Lord showed me this years ago when I was pondering some similar things like we're doing this week and even right now in this moment that I don't always know exactly how in fact I never really know I, I have a little bit of understanding but very very minute understanding of how when I eat physically that food goes into my body and how it gets into my cells and provides the energy that I need and the all the different you know things the nutrients and all I, I, I could not for the life of me today articulate how that happens I'm not scientific in nature I haven't studied that and yet every day of my life I have eaten I think sometimes we pull back from eating of Christ because we don't understand how that's going to make a difference in our life we don't understand what that's going to mean for us you know for this specific situation or in our future or what the benefits going to be but see when we eat out of hunger when we eat out of a craving out of a sense of we know there's delight and joy and satisfaction in him we don't have to explain all that I couldn't explain all of that there are things that I can you know after having walked with the Lord now for many years and having eaten of Jesus for many years I could tell you lots of benefits and I could you know share stories with you and I, I do that on this YouTube channel a lot of, of different ways that the Lord has satisfied me and taken care of me and nourished me but as far as getting into all the nitty-gritty details no I don't have that understanding and I don't think you do either I, I know that none of us really have it fully and yet I think sometimes that holds us back from partaking of him well we can't do that physically most of us why should we expect for that to happen spiritually we should just know there's a spiritual hunger and now that Jesus has said I am the bread of life well he's the one we go to to eat from so that would be my first question now that we've looked at these six you know dynamics or benefits the question would be well how do you do that how, how do you eat of Jesus what what does it look like to eat of him and, and we pondered that somewhat in our meditate time this week and I would say you know we could talk about that for a long long time uh, but let me just share a few thoughts with you you know there's so many ways to eat of Jesus just like there's so many ways to eat food I mean you can eat food in the form of a sandwich and you can pick it up with your hands you can use a fork you can use chopsticks you can eat food that's cold you can eat food that's hot you can eat food that's been cooked you can eat food that's been raw you can eat food on a stick or you can eat it on a plate I mean you can eat it off a charcuterie board or you can have your own serving I mean there's all different ways that we eat food and all that to say there's so many different ways to partake of Jesus Jesus is not a staple 
that we eat of just in one way and then we check it off our box. You know, that puts the, the, that, that takes all the beneficial dynamics and experiences of eating of Jesus away and just makes it very robotic and you know just uh, kind of utilitarian in, in scope and nature. No, eating of Jesus, he used this example for us so that we would, because we can understand, because we have so much frame of reference in our own lives. You know, I was just thinking through as I pondered that question myself, you know, of, of different things that Jesus said about himself that he, and that the Bible tells us about him. He is the word. So one of the ways that I eat of Jesus is by being in the word. You're doing that as you're meditating. And there's so many different ways to partake of the word. We can listen to it. We can read it. We can, you know, sing it. We can memorize it. We can listen to other people talk about the word. We can copy it down. We can paint it. I mean, there's so many different ways to partake of the word, but because he is the word, partaking of the word is part of partaking of Jesus. Jesus, um, the Bible tells us that he is peace. He's the prince of peace. And so one of the ways we partake of Jesus, when we need peace, when we're craving peace, where do we go? Where do we go? Do we go to something in this world or we, do we go to him and partake of him? Partake of his word, partake of his presence, pray to him. That's one way to partake of Jesus. You know, he also said he is the way, he's the truth, and he is the life. You know, if he's the way, one of the ways I partake of Jesus, that I eat of Jesus, is that I walk in his way. I find out what his way is, and then I say, that's the way I'm going to walk too. When he says he's the truth, he is the truth. So we listen to what he says, and we don't argue with it. And we don't say, oh, I don't like the way that tastes. No, we eat it anyway, right? And, and we partake of him in that way. Uh, when he says he's the life, that we have an awareness, that's where true life is found. We don't spend our days and all of our energy going after life in other ways and then just putting Jesus in this, he's my religious box category that I have to check. No, he is the life, just like I'm eating often, daily, craving food, many times of Jesus, I'm gonna be partaking of him because he is He is the life. You know, He's he, he said he's the friend of sinners and the Bible tells us that about him. So one way I can partake of Jesus is just in friendship, of seeking him out, spending time with him. The Lord has been making that part of Jesus so clear to me this year. And just over and over again, just that friendship of Jesus and my partaking of that. And one other thing that I would mention, there's many more that we could mention, uh, but one other one that I would is communion. You know, Jesus gave us uh, the practice of communion. He gave us the meal of communion, literally partaking of his body and his blood. And that is one way to literally tangibly take, uh, take Christ into who we are. Many of you who have followed me for a while, you know that a couple years ago, the Lord just really did a major work in my life uh, about the practice of communion. And I share a lot about that. We have a whole study called Experience Communion that's available on our website and a couple videos. Um, in regard to that here on our YouTube channel as well. But I pretty much for the last several years, I take communion every day, at least once a day, sometimes multiple times a day. It's become a part of how I partake of Jesus. There's so much I could share about that. I won't take the time to do that now, but that's just one more way. So the question, how do you eat of Jesus? How do you eat food? I mean, there's so many different ways. How do you eat of Jesus? So many different ways. And I would say to you with that, as I finish that question out as well, don't get stuck in a rut. You know, I, I like to eat a, um, in a routine way in some things. Like uh, for lunch every day, I have a really big salad. And I, I pretty much eat the same thing every day there. But I'll put some little varieties here. I'll switch the dressings out, that kind of thing. But for dinner, I don't want to eat the same thing for dinner every single day right? I don't want to do that for 50, 60 years while I live on this earth. No, I'm gonna, I want variety. And in the same way, don't eat of Jesus the same way all the time. You might like to go to other countries and, you know, eat um, their food. Well, visit with some other Christians, people that you know are eating well of Jesus and find out how they're doing it and eat of him in that way. Always be willing for the adventure. You know, my husband, he is such an adventurous eater, way more than me. Uh, if we go to a restaurant we've not been to before, or even sometimes one we've been to before, he won't even look at the menu. He'll just ask the, the waiter or the waitress, what do you like? And he'll try it. 
because he knows they have experience with the food there. And I'm like, oh, I would never do that. I want to know that I'm going to have this. And I'm the kind of person that many times will go to a restaurant and order the same thing over and over and over again because I know I like it. And there's something beneficial about that as far as spiritual eating, but we also need to have a little bit of adventure in our souls too to really see the, the variety, the pleasure of eating of Christ and living in the life and the, and the blessing that he provides in that way. So I could go on and on and on about that. Let me, let me move on to the next question. If he is the bread of life, then why are we, so many of us as believers, starving or emaciated? You know, um, I think the answer to that is this. We don't know how to discern spiritual hunger versus physical hunger. I mean, we live in a body, right? We have a spirit and soul. We live in a body. God made this body and we are physically hungry and we do need to physically eat. There's nothing wrong with physically eating. However, many times we do not know how to discern the difference between physical appetites for food, physical appetites for pleasure, physical appetites for, you know, uh, sexual appetites and, you know, fame and pride, all these different things, um, identity. And so they all get mixed up into physical appetites when really we have a physical appetite for food. We have a physical appetite for, um, you know, to satisfy sexually. Uh, there are physical appetites within us that it's holy and right to handle in the way that God has showed us how to handle. But there are so many appetites within us that are really spiritual in nature and Jesus is the bread for those things and we have lost that ability to discern the difference and as a result of that in many ways we are overweight physically and I don't just mean in the body I mean we're overweight in debt we're overweight in brokenness of emotions we are overweight and you know just bear out the list of all the different ways that that happens in our world. And yet spiritually, it's like we're anorexic, like we're starving ourselves. And that's got to come into balance. And my prayer this week is that the Lord will help us to develop some discernment as we have meditated here of what are, um, you know, physical appetites that we can fulfill in a godly way and what are spiritual appetites that we need to go to Jesus for. More of our appetites are spiritual than they are physical. And we live on the huge extreme flip-flop of that. I'm, I just really believe that. And I know the Lord has had to work that out in my own life and he still is sanctifying that. And, and, um, and I just continue to look to him for that. And I love spending a week meditating on this to get that right in my mind again because I can so easily fade into having that all mixed up. So last question then here. After meditating on these words of Jesus this week, where he said, you know, amen and amen. He said it before he even said it. And we, we, we meditated on that too. And there's just so much truth there. Um, what, what then? Here's the question. What is the cry of our heart? How do we say amen? Right? Because we say amen after we hear the truth. He says, he says amen twice before he hears, before he says the truth. So how do we say amen? You know, we saw in our passage that the people then said, Lord, Give us that bread then. If that's true, give it to us. And I have to look up multiple ways that people said that. And, and throughout the translations and paraphrases, there are a lot of different ways. I mean, people said, give us this bread. Give it to us now and forever. Give it every day of our lives, Lord. Always I want that bread. All the time give me that bread from now on. And it's great to look at those in the, in the Bible, the paraphrases, the translations of that, and to get some ideas of how to express it. But the real question becomes, how do you say that? How do I say that? Am I saying that? What is the cry of your heart now that you have meditated all week long to know that Jesus is the bread of life? That's who he is. That's who he is. What is the cry of our heart? Are we saying, Lord, give us this bread. I crave you, Jesus. I want to be satisfied in you, Jesus. I don't know exactly how all that works in my body, but that's okay, Jesus, because I'm going to trust what you said about yourself, that you truly are the bread of life. I'm going to eat of you every day, and I'm going to enjoy, not because I have to, but because I get to. 
you are the wonderful, amazing bread of life. Isn't that, isn't that just incredible to know? To plant your feet in, to plant your life in this truth. It's a prayer of my heart that we're going to, all of us, come into a greater revelation of what this means in our lives on a day-to-day, meal-by-meal basis as we partake of Jesus. So we're just getting started. There will be more I am statements that we are going to ponder and meditate on this month. So stay, stay tuned in. I'll be back in touch again soon. For now, have a great day, everyone. I'll see you.